Las Vegas, the entertainment capital of the world, where every artist dreams of performing. Now, for one night only, nine much-loved British entertainers will fulfill that lifelong dream. How you doing, boys? Rock and Tommy! This is what Donald Trump looks like when he comes out of the shower, this is. Sing a song! Anybody in particular? Gary Nanolo! Oh, hello, boy, why? <laughs> oh, he's up the jack sea! The only thing I don't like about it is I ain't seen a pub for about three days. Never put your knickknacks on to dry on the balcony. I'm a pianist from the UK. You're a penis? A pianist. They have performed to television audiences of 20 million people, but they have never performed on a Las Vegas stage. This is a very special venture for each and every one of us. Mentoring them will be a top Las Vegas producer. The man who is a Las Vegas legend, Frank Marino! Who is taking on the biggest challenge of his career. My name's on the line. I hope they realize I'm taking a big risk. This will be the most memorable gig of their lives. Previously on Last Laugh in Vegas. I know you've played for royalty. I know you've played the London Palladium. But when we get to Vegas, it's going to be a beast of something bigger than you've ever done before. Whoa. Welcome to Vegas. I don't get it. I is the chicken drunk? <laughs> chicken? You were the one I was the most nervous about. I'm 81 years old. This is what I do. Yeah. If we do the show the way I saw the show today, we're going to flop. Who'd ever thought we'd finish up in Vegas? I've just been given the show rehearsal schedule. There's no mention of liberal arts yet. Have we dropped liberal arts? No, no, is it, no, is it, no. it that it's not happening? Oh, look at this. Whoa. Here we are, guys. Cannonball. Maybe we could write something into your existing act that's just for Vegas. Anita, this is a huge room that you're playing now. I see you in a nightclub, just belted out. He felt I was like a cabaret singer, rather than... We'll see. The show is in less than two weeks' time for the nine entertainers, and it's their first day of rehearsals. Although they have worked together many times over the years, they've never lived together. Hello. Hi, hello, all right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Hello, Varney, Mum. Hi. How are you? Are you okay? Yeah, good, love. Tommy's made breakfast this morning. Lovely. And I'm going to do something I don't usually do. I'm going to wash you up, love. <laughs> oh. Don't exert yourself. <laughs> really, don't exert yourself. Don't do too much. All right, I'll see you later, love. Bye, love. Love you. Love you. Bye, love. Bye. Oh, we're oh, 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 you look really nice. I love that. Is that an old coward job? No, a Jess Conrad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, how, breakfast, who does that? There are certain members of our community who are playing the I'm hopeless and I can't do anything for myself card. I don't know how my wife does this, but that, look, you can't even know me. Stop. No, you just, you just get, pull them apart like that. Like, Jess. Oh, when it, oh. oh no, just, just a minute. Darling, with respect, you are 81. And then that's it. And then you pour in bowl. I know that. So don't be silly. I just said I couldn't open the bloody yeah. packet. Jess is like a little chick in a nest. Feed me. Feed me, feed me. Where did you say the milk was? In the fridge. In the fridge. Where's that? Just walk forward. You know, I realise how much I've missed my wife, the funny old trouble. You know, I can't do anything without her. There's a whole new life. There's what ordinary people do. You know, ordinary people cook. <laughs> I'd sooner die than cook. For this performance, I think everybody's going to need to be in shape. So while they're here in America, I set up a fitness instructor named Fornia, who's an ex-pole dancer. I think they're all going to love Fornia a lot, because uh, she's just that type of person. Hello, darling. Hi. 
I'm your fitness trainer. I'm Fanya. Oh, hello. Nice to meet you, sir. Hello, hello. it's only one show name, babe. I'm today. I'm Fanya. Uh, uh, so it's Sonia. Fanya. Oh, yeah, Fanya. Fanya. We'd probably call her Fanya. <laughs> Somebody else might have said Fanya, Kate. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hi, I'm Fanya. Matt, nice to meet you. Beautiful lady. And we're thinking, what's she here for? Then we found out. Uh, keep fit. Glad they didn't say, come on, let's go and play bridge. Go ahead and grab yourself a yoga mat there in the shade. Bob, you got a mat? Righto. I couldn't do it because I'm super fit already. I don't need it. I've just been so fit, you know. Shoes are optional. And usually as oh. I teach, just things start coming off. Here's this beautiful Fournier creature of blonde and the men are salivating. <laughs> We're gonna start with a few arm circles. Open up your chest, take a deep breath in. Don't smack me with your arms. <laughs> and moving into wrists. Taking a deep breath in. Inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Beautiful. We're gonna just let your feet come back together. Reach for your toes. Oh. Another O move, I know. <laughs> you can even just go for your knees if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Just give them a massage. I can probably just about make it down to the ankle. What she's making of all of us wheezing and, and falling about, I, I don't know. So your knee crosses over your body. Oh, oh shit. shit. So we should get oh, this a lot of it. They're trying to kill us. I am as stiff as a poker, groaning, creaking, uh, and that was just me. <laughs> this is a great idea, but would you come to Sheffield every week? <laughs> there was Jess and Bobby B. Fabulous vantage point, right bird's eye view. Then bend your knees, roll up to standing, and coming up to center, just switching directions, pointing your opposite toe. Bobby wants to do exercises like I want to be hung, and Jessie doesn't want to do anything except look in a mirror. And letting your hands relax at your sides. And give each of you a hand for today's class. Good job. Thank you. Very much. Thank Thank you. That was actually very invigorating. That was good, wasn't it? Good. Yeah, I think it was fantastic. I'd do that every day if I could. Especially with somebody as good looking as she is. My heck. Yes, good job. Yeah, I used to do all that when I boxed. It wasn't called um, yoga then, it was called stretching. Yeah? I mean, you just do half an hour stretching before we went home or went back to the pub. Lovely to see you, babe. Do you know, absolutely fabulous. It is the perfect way to actually get yourself mind and body ready for your performance. Right. Bye, darling, have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, she's got a fantastic backside. Leaving the house on time for their first crucial rehearsal is proving a challenge. They're already running half an hour late. Guys, now, Kenny, please, we need to go. No, Mr. Bossy, no, we're just, going. It's like herding cats. Everybody, you know, somebody wants to go for a wee, somebody else has forgotten the coat. Was that looking after small children? Come on, Bob. I've gone over a wee. Come on. Did you fall asleep in here? Pardon? Don't matter. Waiting for them is Broadway choreographer Nick Foote, who, together with producer Frank Marino, has planned a rigorous rehearsal schedule to get the cast show ready. The problem with Vegas is now it is so big. If you're gonna be on stage, you better be the best at what you do. So I really hope at this first rehearsal, they're able to show Nick what he's looking for. And what he's looking for is to see when they come on, if they could command the stage. Bobby, what are you like when it comes to dancing and choreography? Well, I was a jive champion. When did you last jive, Bob? 1956. <laughs> you haven't taken into consideration that there are some people that don't like bloody dancing. We're not going to dance, are we? I the am to dancing dance. what Eric Pickles is to hang gliding. Yes. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> I'm really excited, and I can feel it with all the others. Um, there's a buzz. There's a terrific buzz. Lead the way, Thriller Miller. Wow. Hello. Oh, wow. This looks serious. Yeah. I'm Nick. Nick, nice to meet you. Hi, Anita. Hello. Anita, Nick. Nick. The start of today was a little disappointing because they were running late. 10 minutes turned into 15 minutes, turned into a half hour, and that was just a little, little much for me. OK, you know, let's, everybody, let's show up on time. Let's get the work done. Let's push through. Nick seems to be annoyed with everybody's late and all that, but you can't argue with 
old age pensions because we don't give a fuck. It's as simple as that. So, how are we with, like, stretching, flexibility? Well, we've been doing morning exercise class. Good, yeah. excellent, yeah. excellent. So we can all touch our toes or go down forward. Oh, 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 oh. We're not that good. <laughs> <laughs> we're not that good. Can you see your toes? That's more important. Can everybody see their toes? Yeah, we can see it. Not everybody is a mover, not everybody is a dancer, and that's fine. That's... Nobody's a dancer or a mover, apart from the two girls. But that's what my job is. My job here is to make everybody look good. Okay, I have an idea. I think what we need to do is I need to put on some music and I need to see you guys strut across the stage. Strut across so that we can see how you walk. I want to see the confidence because if you can't sell it, they're not going to buy it, right? Exactly. Let me put on some music for you guys. Oh! Oh, yes! Look at that! What a mover! My goodness, Anita Harris. She sprinted across that floor like she was a 16-year-old showgirl. Come on, Mick! There we go, Mick. Oh, very nicely done. Nick was looking for some kind of movement from us, I think, but I think really deep down, he was looking to see if we could move at all. Yeah! Get loose! There we go. Bernie. It was like he was doing the ostrich dance. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jess! Jess was dire. Oh, yeah. Oh! Jess was the best on the day. Oh, absolutely. I thought he was terrific, Jess. Big boy! There we go. Got that Two. swag going on. There we go, Kenny. There we go, Bobby. Oh, Bobby! Here we go. Susie, baby! Very light on her feet. I was impressed with Bobby and Tommy. They can move. Mm, yeah. Here's Tommy. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, there we go. A surprise, surprise, the little barrel, Bobby Ball, puts us all to shame. All right. Oh, look at this! There we go. <laughs> hey! There. I like everybody having a good time, but we need to get the work done. Tomorrow, we are starting with our big Broadway medley. So come in knowing your material so that when we all join together, it's going to be seamless, it's going to be flawless. I look forward to working with all of you and creating something wonderful. Fab, thank you, Nick. Oh, Nick. 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 If we were rehearsing in England, there'd be no problems. We feel very confident and all that because we're used to it. But because it's Vegas, which is the pinnacle of any performer's career, I'm a little bit apprehensive. Nine British entertainers are in Las Vegas. They have less than two weeks to fulfill their lifelong ambition of performing in the City of Lights. Hi, love. Hi, love. You all right? Yeah, yeah. Listen, I haven't packed my braces. Well, I haven't. I've been through my baggies twice. Have you looked at the front of the case? Have you looked at your suit bag? Yes, love, I have. I've done everything. Well, you'd have to go and buy some then, won't you? Even though we're thousands of miles away from his lovely wife, Yvonne, he's phoning her. I can't tell you, if we're in a car together, if we've got two-hour journey, he'll phone her at least six or seven times in that time. Sorry ringing you so late. Sorry, right, we'll sort it. You'll see, don't worry about it. Next time I ring you, put a bit of makeup on us. Well, I'm feeling that I'm swearing. Ta-da, gotta go. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye, love. In the show, pianist Bobby Crush will be performing a tribute to his hero, Liberace. With the show looming, he's hoping to be inspired by a private viewing of a Liberace collection. Jess has decided to come too, as he knew the Vegas legend. Can you see in the distance, there's our venue, the Orleans. Because we're going to see this Liberace place, I've put a pair of trousers and a smart shirt on. I thought you'd like that. You think he'd like that, or you think... Well, I know him. I met him, didn't oh, I? Yes, you did. Yes, you told me. Um, well, no, I, I'm just, I, I'm just I thought it was a more sort of casual affair this morning, so I've got a smart T-shirt on. 
Well, Bobby's here in Las Vegas. I really want him to eat, sleep, and breathe Liberace. He stood for what I think Las Vegas is, the glitz and the glamour. He would have a fur coat on with a train, a car covered with rhinestones. It was just a spectacle. Bobby needs to become Liberace on show night. Hot Rod City. Yes, look at this. Fantastic. Fantastic. Whoa. Well, Good how morning, are you? gentlemen. How are you? I'm Jess. Jess, John yeah. Ultimus. Nice to Hi, meet John. you. And John, I'm Bobby. 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 <laughs> Only in Vegas could something like this happen. It's absolutely Isn't this beautiful? Fantastic. Yes, this is a Liberace garage, and it um, was designed by the Liberace Foundation to house Liberace's automobiles that he used fantastic. for performance. You may, you may have been told already that I've done three Liberace projects back at the uh, yes. UK. Mm -hmm. I met I met uh, Liberace. You did. Uh, and, uh, I, of course, we all called him Lee. Lee, yep. Mm -hmm. He came over to England and I took him to my tailor All right. in Savile Row uh -huh. and he had suits made and he even played the piano in the local pub. Wow. <laughs> Jess is Jess. The moment that he met John it was I was Liberace's best friend, he gave me a shirt, I played his piano. And he played and he was he was he was as right as ninepence. He let me drive his car, we went to dinner. I don't want to say he was a pain in the ass, but <laughs> he was. So how long did you know him for? Um, I didn't know Liberace personally, but I'm involved with the foundation and a oh, fan right. for yeah. many years. I think he thought that I was Liberace because he kept looking at me, as they do. I didn't want to say, <laughs> like, Bobby's the Liberace, not me. So listen, if you'd like to lead on <laughs> okay. and um, so show us So let's take around. a little look as we go through yeah. um, the garage. Now, do not touch. Do not... Uh, the, the, tem <laughs> the temptation will be very great, but I promise not to. This is the English taxi cab that was brought over. Can you imagine Liberace on a street corner in London hailing one of these? <laughs> I'd like you to take me to Piccadilly Circus. <laughs> That's Bruce Forsyth that you're doing. Good game. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks I mean, how rude. I worked very hard on that. I wanted to smack him. So this is one of uh, Liberace's original costumes. I'm going to have that. Uh, I'm going to have a jabot. Yep. Oh. I've, I've got a, I've got a beaded uh, white tail coat. Fabulous. Uh, beads down the trousers. Wow. A beaded waistcoat. And it's you're going to have a cape and everything. Uh, and what, well, beautiful. sadly not. I haven't got a cape, but. Um, uh, I've got everything else. You must, in order to perform as Liberace, have all the aspects of the costume. And when the cape comes off, then the performer comes out. We have one more thing for you. Oh, really? We would like for you to play the Shawarsky <gasps> encrusted piano. Well, I couldn't believe it. My hero, Liberace, I'm actually going to get to play one of his own pianos. I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places. It was such a thrill to know that my fingers now have just touched the keys in the same way as uh, my great hero. Across the way, the children... It's about keeping the legacy alive. We keep the legacy alive with people like Bobby that perform as Liberace. I'm honored to have him play for us today. But I'll be seeing you Well, thank you very much. You've been a marvellous audience. I didn't know Bruce Forsyth was such a good pianist. It's the fourth morning in Vegas and the entertainers are, for the most part, hard at work rehearsing. Then we've got to go up at the bar. That's what friends are. It's a little Liberace flourish for you at the end. I'm going to need a little help with this, I think. Bernie, could I have your technical prowess, please? Technical prowess? Well, people think that I'm only a world-renowned ostrich handler, but more than that, I'm actually a technical wizard. This might be start or stop. I tried that. Well, it says start or stop. That's it. Right, so now I've got to so, wind it back. Hang on, now I've got to wind it back. Mm. OK, take, pick All it right, up. Take it out. Yep. Give it a moment to think about its future. Yep, thank you. And start again. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Frank has said to me in no uncertain terms, I have to work on my voice. <laughs> It's very fast, isn't it? Yeah. Bernie Clifton is a joy. I think I've known him since I was probably 17. And underneath all that funniness is an amazing vocal ability. That, just put your fingers yeah. there. Yeah. And it's that to... Yeah, that's... <laughs> I'm sure my obituary has already been written in terms of the, the effect that the ostrich has had on my career. But all I really wanted to be was, it, was a singer. Yeah, 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 yeah. See the break? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which you can't have, you know. It's got to go... Yeah, 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 yeah. A house full of entertainers, for me, couldn't be worse. Here I am, trying to get some sun, a bit of sleep. They're singing, they're doing jokes, they've got bobbies on the piano. I mean, they're driving me crackers. Was that you singing before? I'm afraid I was singing before, yeah. It was yeah. me. It sounded good. Did it? Yeah. Just sing. Really? Yeah. And just... Get the ostrich in a zoo. Oh. <laughs> the little lip went. <laughs> <laughs> I've known Bernie for years, you know, and he's always used props, always used props. And I've just heard him singing there, he is. He's absolutely fabulous. What great voice he's got. I sing a song. Anybody in particular? Gary Nanalo. <laughs> Who's that? Gary Nanalo. Do you mean Barry Manalo? That's what I said. Gary Nanalo. Anyone else? The Gee Gees. Do you mean the Bee Gees? That's what I said, the Gee Gees. I'm panicking now about your act. So now I've got Frank worried about me, I've got Mick Miller worried about me, and I'm the only one that's not worried about me. You've been a big help. Started him out as well, gave him his first break. I think it was his ankle. No, darling, it's 9.34 and we've got to rehearse at 10. The alarm call that would give you nightmares, can I? Well, it's our second rehearsal with Nick and we can't be late again. What's up? Through Pollard, they should use a waking up the dead. If somebody heard her talking from Nakasaki, they'd think the fucking atom bomb had been dropped again. Hips, 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 hips. Hey, guys! Having arrived on time, the entertainers are back at the studio for their second rehearsal with Nick Foote and his dancers. I've given you some men. Oh, fabulous. Oh, great. So, all four gentlemen will be one, two, three, four. I say, oh, I thought I've looked out here. They were marvellous. Is it one of those where you, uh, you yeah. just might go? No, no, absolutely, no, absolutely. It's just a nice little gentle thing Exactly, like that. But, and they're going to be staring straight forward. OK. Try not to grope them. What sort of girl does he think I am? He's been speaking to my mother. He will hold me Next door, Bobby, Tommy and Mick are rehearsing a new Elvis routine with John K. Cooper, who is working with Frank on the production of the show. Hey, mine's not lit up, Tommy. That's not right. Why is mine not lit up? Well, maybe, maybe you forgot to pay your electric bill. Cannon and Ball are obviously big stars. What I wanted them to do is do something just specific for Las Vegas. There's a lighting change. Yeah. Uh, and at that point, make the suit, your suit, is switched on, yeah. so it, li it lights up. New material just doesn't happen, you know, like that. Bob writes it and I'll, he'll give it to me and I'll go, oh, yeah, but if we do that and we do that and we change that and we do... And that's how we work, that's how we do it. A chance to appear as Elvis for a whole season. I don't know why you're bothering. It's quite obvious he's going to win. Yeah, someone 30 years younger than you. I'm honoured to be doing uh, this sketch with Tommy and Bobby because they are masters of timing. But it's a bit daunting, really, because, like, they've been doing it a lot of years and I'm a one-man band. It's always on my mind. He's an idiot. <laughs> so you just found out. Oh, don't worry about me. It's not like telling a joke. Well, it's a routine, which is totally different. So we've got to go over it and over it and over it, me, Tommy and Mick, 
to get it working right. It obviously had hundreds of hits. Well, I'm in trouble here, because I can't think of one. Let's uh, we go through it once more. We worked on it, and then I could see it all coming together, you know. But the worry for me is everyone loves Elvis in Vegas, and we're basically going to take the mickey out of it. Nine brief. How wonderful it was all around us till we got into the desert area. It was it was a fantastic trip. We got to this clearing, and before we met the American Indian, we had to help put the teepee up. Me and Tommy got involved. You know, it was it was a bit um, hard work. That's a good one, Tom. Done that very well. What are you, Jess? The foreman? Yeah, he was, <laughs> I'm the foreman. He's suddenly become the foreman. Well, I don't want to get into the physical work, do I? I don't do manual. I don't do manual. I start as a male model, you know. What do I know about hammers and things? Looks as if I'm doing something. It'd be good on my CV, look. Jess held one pole for the whole half an hour. Tommy, bless his heart, Tommy was, like, knocking these things in, the tent pegs. Go on, Tommy, put a bit of beef into it, like I would. What time do we have a break? I've watched people, and when they do manual work, they're all, you know, all, you know. You're doing all right, though. Go on, Mick, you got it, you've got it, go on. I like a smooth life, you know. Um, in other words, don't get involved. After we'd put the uh, teepee up, James, the medicine man, arrived. We all sat there with him and he wanted us to tell us a little bit about our lives. My name is James Warren Flaming Eagle Mooney. The purpose for me to be here is for you. You and your spirit chose to be here. If I was a Native American, I think I would be called Chief Good-Looking One. So I take fire, connect it with the earth. So now, we're ready. I'm a smoker, but I didn't get a chance to have a go. Uh, yeah, he wouldn't, he wouldn't pass it round. He's selfish, Indian. So please introduce yourself to the, to the medicine. I'm Jess Conrad. I've been in the entertainment business for 60 oh, years. Back up for a moment. For some reason, I don't get your name. T say your name again. Jess Conrad. Jess? J it's not my real name. Huh? It's not my real name. So That's the reason I don't get That's it. That's the reason. My real name's Gerald Arthur James. Gerald? Real English name, Gerald Arthur James. Would you mind if I called you Gerald? Because then I can remember. Yeah, sure. His real name's Gerald. I mean, he doesn't look like a Gerald, does he? You know what I mean? Gerald should be an accountant, shouldn't he? Thank you for being straight. Because that's what this medicine is all about. Introduce yourself, and then I'd like you to try to think about why you're here. My name is Anita Harris, married to Michael for 44 years. <laughs> I came here because life has taken over a little bit, and I just feel to be with friends is important. Mm -hmm. So the emotions that you're carrying right now, what's that about? Um, my husband has been poorly for a long time. Michael? Yes? Oh, my God. So these are who? Oh, Mickey, that's you. Uh -huh. and that's your wife. Ten years ago, Mike was diagnosed with cancer in the eye and it left him with some memory loss. Good Lord. You and me, darling, on the beach. So we deal with that together, but uh, he's, he's still my Mike. So I'm <clears throat> getting strength from coming here. And let's put this over your heart, honey. Oh, thank you. It's for Michael. Thank you, darling. This woman's love, a companion. Let her have peace. And let her have understanding of what life is. Things started to get uh, quite serious, and um, 
Whether it were anything uh, to do with what he was smoking in the pipe, whatever he was on, he was doing a good job. <laughs> OK, my friend. Hey, my name's Mick, Mick Miller, uh, real name Mick Lawton. Uh, I was an ex-professional soccer player for three years. But I, didn't, I didn't make it, which broke my heart. You know, very big name, so Stanley Matthews comes up to you and says, you know, you're not going to make it. So you're on the scrap heap at, you know, 17 years old. So that was a big disappointment to me, but probably one thing that's always uh, bugged me is uh, my parents were so proud of me, but they both passed before I got on television, you know, and yeah. they would have been so proud they of me. Would, I. It's probably a good job I didn't have a blow on that pipe because I, I opened up like the Grand Canyon. Um, <clears throat> my father was um, not the nicest of men. Um, we just, but he didn't have any love for me and um, left me and my mum on our own when I was six. Um, my mum worked in a cotton mill from half past seven till half past five at night. Um, I was at home and I would make her baked beans on toast because she was working hard. And, um, and then uh, I left school and then um, life seemed to change. I met my pal Bobby. I love Bobby to bits. He's been We've been together for 54 years. Um, hopefully, we can carry on and, you know, a bit longer. <laughs> I can't imagine that come on Saturday, week on Saturday, we'll all be there where, where the greats have been, you know? So, well, I suppose that's... So you're wanting to feel oh. one with the greats? Yeah. Oh, boy, that is cool. Yeah. Over the years, we've done bits of charity together or a little show here and there, but never actually got to know each other. And this has brought us very, very close. Today's been something that I wasn't expecting. I feel so great to be alive. I feel absolutely fantastic. It was really brilliant, actually, yeah. He loved him, Jess. He's got his email. How can an Indian chief have an email? It's a big day for the nine entertainers in Vegas. This afternoon at rehearsals, they'll be performing for show producer Frank Marino. Hello. Hi, hello. You all right? Yeah, you. What yeah. are you eating now? Egg, bacon, baked beans. Very Got nice. Food. Yeah, and... Are you washing up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll ring you later. Mm. Can you not be eating and chewing and picking your teeth? That's really romantic. Say <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hello. You pretend you love me. All love right, then. Love you to Bye, death. Bye. <laughs> Upstairs, Anita is looking through a box of memories. Her career began as a showgirl in Vegas when she was just 16 at the El Rancho Hotel. This was the sign outside. It was desert either side. There was nothing. The Strip just had a few hotels, like the Desert Inn, the Flamingo, the Dunes, the Stardust, but hardly any more. Gosh, it was wonderful. It was just so beautiful. And, of course, we had a lot of fun, because we were girls together. <laughs> I had a dream of coming back, and then I let that dream go, because it didn't happen. Finally, back in Vegas, Anita heads out to find the El Rancho Hotel, with Bobby Cross joining her for moral support. The sun is shining, the sky is blue, and I'm on my way to take me back 58 years. <laughs> Anita, to me, has a very meek voice. She has to remember that spirit she had as a showgirl and realize she's here now as a singer, as a headliner. She needs to be able to say, I still got it and I'm back and I'm gonna just conquer this town. 
This is beginning to look a little, a little bit, bit familiar. familiar. Let me stop for a reason. This isn't it, is it? Are we here? This is, for me, quite a huge thing. Oh, so this is it? Oh, my goodness. Well, it's a bus stop. <laughs> this, is, this is crazy. Oh, wow. The El Rancho Hotel burnt down in 1959, and the place where it stood is now, like a lot of Las Vegas, unrecognisable from how it once looked. Well, there was a swimming pool in the front, oh. and our little chalets were at the back where we stayed. It was the beginning of everything for me, really. <sighs> oh, what a shame. What a shame. It would have been nice, actually, to have come here and found something on the site, wouldn't it, rather but now than we just come. this empty space. Decades ahead, the Beatles, yeah. Yeah. Cirque du Soleil, love. That's the new Vegas. Yep, yep. Having asked Tommy, Bobby and Mick to write new material for their Vegas show, Frank has arranged for them to meet one of the city's most successful comedians. What's it called? Frank Schrinter. Frank Schinter. Frank Schinter. Legend. He can give us a few uh, guidelines well, yeah, where, to, where to go, which, which would be nice of him. Yeah. He might turn around, Tom, and give us some advice, like pack it in. He might tell me to get me a haircut. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This afternoon, we went to meet a legend, a comedy legend. I think this is the one here. If anybody can give us advice how to do comedy on an American stage, it's Frankie Schinter, because he's done it a long, long time. Hello, oh, gentlemen. How are you? Yes. Welcome. How are you? My name is Mick. My Frankie Mick. Shinter, Mick. Frankie, Frankie Shinter, Tommy. Tommy. Bobby. You guys have a great accent. Thank you. That was good choice. Well, at least in this place, this is the Las Vegas Italian American oh, Club. Amazing. Welcome. Thank this you. is a great place. Yeah. You're going to love it. On the wall, there's pictures of everybody that yeah. has spent time here. It reminds you of, of Vegas in the 60s because. Yeah. This is the lounge. The lounge act performs up there. Wow. And back here is the Sinatra room. Oh, OK. And this is where Mr. Sinatra would eat with his friends. Wow. And as you can see, these were the doors they would close so nobody would come in here. Wow. So this is history right here, live yeah. history. We had lunch in Frank Sinatra's private dining room. How many people can say that? When the other guys ran this town. <laughs> Those guys. Yes. <laughs> to be sat there with the rat pack surrounding us and listen to Frank's stories, oh, it, it blew my mind. Blew my mind. So, Frankie, how long have you been in Vegas? 17 years. Blessed to headline in this town, you know? It's changed a little bit, um, but it's still great. In England, we used to get 20 million viewers, which is massive. Oh, my God. Uh, but never done Vegas. And for every English act, it's an ambition to do Vegas, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Every but... entertainer, that's their dream. Like, fishermen yeah. go to the ocean. Yeah, yeah. Entertainers want to go to Vegas. Yeah, that's right. You know, Vegas has become a town. Everybody wants everything fast. Yeah, yeah. The old days, you could do a piece of material that was 10 minutes long. Yeah. That's right. Because people weren't in a hurry. Right. In America, they stand in front of a microwave and say, hurry up. I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, in England, your guys are more proper. Yeah. You are. Your people listen, they laugh, they yeah. listen, they laugh, yeah. they applaud. America's like, impress me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But as, as you said, do you know what I mean? They want it quick, so one line is, they're the best, aren't they? Because if they don't laugh for that one, bang, I'm in with another. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is a big deal for me. I'm really taking on board what Frankie's told me, you know. I don't want to cock this up. That worries me, what <clears> you've <throat> been saying, Frank. Yeah. What me and him do, we don't do jokes as such, we do... Routine. Pieces of material. Pieces of material we do, yeah. You just gotta hone it to the crowd you're playing for. Listen to all this advice from Frankie. We're under pressure. He actually, <laughs> he actually frightened me a little bit. There's nothing like no. what you guys do no. in this town. It's gone. And having guys like you come here is gonna open the eyes of a lot of people. That's good. Yeah. I can't wait to see you in front of like, our audience. We're so excited about doing it. We oh, can't, man, know, it's, can't I wait. can't wait. Yeah. I'm wearing a diaper just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst the comedians get advice from Frankie, 
The singers, along with Bernie, are back in rehearsals, awaiting the arrival of producer Frank Marino. We've been rehearsing now for a couple of days, and it's time to show the big boss that Frank has become, in my head, certainly. In fact, they liked the Baroness more. You know, when your producer comes, you want him to know that you're not wasting his time. They like the Baroness more. But I get her. Oh Is that too much? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh Is that terrible? No. Are you happy with that? I'm very happy with I that. I apologise. No, that's not so It's excitable nerves, but it's still almost like the feeling you get first time you have an audition or something, you think, oh, blimey, this is it. I never gave in, now everyone can see. I am really hoping when I walk in today, they impress me, because what I need to see today is something close to what we're going to see on opening night, because there aren't that many rehearsal days. Hey, guys. Oh, oh I'm so what do you got? <laughs> Uh, we're doing the Broadway medley today. Oh, I'd love to see that. Yeah, it's absolutely, going good. Absolutely, yeah. You guys ready to show me something? All the yeah. Stars. In America, when people go to Broadway, they go to Broadway. Now, if you're going to do Broadway in Las Vegas, it's got to be great. Come along and listen to the lullaby of Broadway. These guys have a lot to do, and there's so many elements involved with this. They got to learn the words. They got to learn the steps. They got to learn how to work with each other. So it's a big undertaking. I never gave up. I never gave in. A star I was going to be. You look at his face and you're thinking, oh, dear. Didn't seem to like that. That's a bit of a serious expression. Then spread sunshine all over the place. Just put on a hat. All that we want to do as British performers is just attain what he might have in his mind for us. To fight for the right without question or pause, to be willing to march in hell. Well, I know that Frank was worried about my prop comedy, but I do think, and I'm hopeful, that my singing will go down very well in Vegas. I didn't realize how good your voice was. Thank you, Frank. The ostrich never told me. <laughs> <laughs> My concern is they're all holding back. If we got to put our foot on that gas pedal to get it done, I'm just going to make a recommendation. Just make them go bigger on everything, because yeah. it's, it's coming to me off very cabaret. Yep. All right, maybe we should have them run it again. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay, let's That'd do that. Can we do it once more, guys, please? Frank is uh, pretty tough to work for. And he makes you work and work and work until it's uh, until he thinks it's right. Guys, that was great. Can we do it just one more time? But I want to do it. I just want to do it full out, like you're on the main stage, and do it like it's actually the show itself. Right. Yep. They have one minute in the opening number to grab the audience with a bang. If you don't get that Vegas audience up front, you lost them for the rest of the night. Face just could sink a thousand ships. I absolutely hate it. Oh God, what are we gonna do? He hates it. I'm on the brink of saying, have I done the right thing to come here? Have we all made uh, a really awful mistake? I'm that far off walking. Oh man. Kenny! This is your scene. They're not able to find their marks. People coming out before the name is called. My name's online, Woo! and they're going to embarrass themselves. If I can't get these people to the level I want them at, I'll pull the show. Hi, guys. How are you? Who are we today? I'm Pamela Manderson. <laughs> Here we are, having the most fantastic time 
little did we know what was about to happen. Reports of an active shooter situation at the Mandalay Bay. I can tell you at this time, we do have a suspect down.